talk about Abdullah Zala BCO. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm so honored to be here uh, today. I would like to share with you about my uh, experience that I have tried to do the endoscopic this year since 2004. Initially, you know, everyone had the learning curve. Initially, in the first couple of years, I did some surgery, but the success rate in overall in primary and secondary uh, revision is not that high, it's only 81%. But when you keep on learning by yourself, then the success rate will be 88 and nearly 100%. So, by the talk today, I will show you my concept when I use to approach to my current lacrimal surgery right now. This is my CV that I done some uh, maybe uh, 2014 to 15 is so approximately 750 cases, and I try to introduce the flap surgery in the early year of my practice. You see, this is a learning curve. On the first time, we all have a good success rate because we learn from our mentor. Sometimes we try our trial and error, sometimes our success rate drop down. Immediately we learn from our mistake. That's the best way to learn. So the concept for the endoscopic lacrimal surgery that I always do they have only two simple concepts. The first one is the bone concept and the second one is the approximation of the lacrimal flap concept. Comparing this is my own CT scan. You see, I myself have a very bad septal deviation to the left. Many of my fellow and my colleagues that come back and learn with me and try to do endoscopic easier. Some had successful, some did not. Because when you did encounter with the septal deviation like this, and you have uh, no uh, the way to do the septal deviation surgery, that can be the very, very difficult. So this is the uh, normal lacrimal anatomy and this is an ideal concept for the lacrimal surgery. The nasal ostium should be big and wide and lacrimal flow is very good. This is an ideal, ideal ostium. So when we take a look in the failed case, we divide the fail from the ecto DCR and fail from the endoscopic DCR. Most of the time when we do the endoscopy, uh, we disturb a lot of the nasal mucosa. So a lot of scar tissue in the nasal side. And maybe a lot of scar tissue from the orbital side, from the external of this year. So the mechanism of the fail because of inadequacy of the bone and inadequacy of the flat approximation, even though we put the silicone stand, later that many mother scar tissue, tissue encroach. When you started to do the endoscope visa, I recommend you to go to the anatomy department, you should pay light and put in the orbit, and you observe from the nasal side. You will see how thick net it is. See uh, how pale and fill and, and take it out with the wrong jerk. And you can feel and you can know how thick net it is. This is the best way to learn. And this is a good diagram of the three dimension of the orbital bone. So this is show the nasal anatomy that is not so big, especially Asian people, the nose is quite uh, small compared to Caucasian or um, uh, Middle East or... And this is show the uh, anatomy of the bone after the DCR surgery. You can see if you can take a look from the CT scan, you learn what you do, and you have you have done the survey and bring the patient back, and you get the CT scan. You learn uh, how much you have moved. And I did uh, some study about the volume of the bone that I have removed. Average is about uh, uh, 0.26 millimeter. So we go to the nowadays the information technology is so good. If you have the iPad, you download the C anatomy application, it's not that expensive. And you learn the digital anatomy at home. Uh, you have no need to go to the anatomy department. You can learn the uh, black and more bone, the frontal bone of the maxillary bone, even though from the orbital side or on the nasal side. You can learn, you can be like you are going to do the endoscopic in the nose. This is show the frontal bone of the maxillary bone. 
and you can see how thick it is. The relationship with the ethmoid bone and the lacrimal bone, this is a very important anatomy when you go through the endoscopic lacrimal surgery. Once uh, uh, in, in this application is so good and I use a lot and, and it's helped me so much for the surgery. One good technique that I use or they use to uh, estimate the adequacy of the bone during the endoscopic DCR. We all know that we need to remove the bone is quite big. Uh, apply the bone probe uh, simply in the horizontal dimension and then the pink area is show the bone that we should remove. And when you apply the tip of the bone probe uh, horizontally and then you rotate downward 45 degree and then approach the tip of the bone of the bone probe to this one, this is show the upper part of the bone that we should remove. So this is a very uh, quick and one within one or two seconds, you can estimate the adequacy of the bone that you have removed. I divided the bone into two parts. The first step uh, is the lower two third, and the second step is upper one third. When we uh, open the nasal mucosa, we cut and create the C-shaped flap. Uh, this is a simple uh, 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 posture. And then we use a simple crescent launcher to remove the lower two third of the bone. And in this part, it's not that difficult because we have a good uh, space and enough space to do. But the more challenging part is the upper one third. And during the remove the frontal process of the maxillary bone, you need to be really, really careful not remove the nasal mucosa too much. The second step is how to remove the upper one third of the frontal process of the maxillary bone. Um, I have found that the technique with the simple cheese cell and the mouth leg in a, a couple punch, with, uh, you can remove the upper one third of the frontal process very easy. But in this point, you need to be very, very careful not go too deep or not go too high. Because sometimes you go too deep without knowing the anatomy, they're good. You can break the uh, reform plate and then the CSF could be leaked. This is a show the endoscopic will how to do the uh, estimate the adequacy of the bone. You apply in horizontal uh, fat, uh, dimension and then uh, rotate backward about 45 degrees. This is show the area of the upper one third that we should remove. I have found without removing my failure about 5 to 10 percent. After we remove this one, it's increasing nearly 100 percent. So this is a good uh, anatomy show the good bone and this is show the not so big for the nasal bone and then uh, ostia. So the second uh, important concept is the flap approximation. I initially on the first my silly I tried to um, do like conventional endoscopy without with the flap suturing. One day I think oh extra they can do the uh, suturing but I think we should try to do that and apply suturing in the endoscopic vision. So for classification that I use always use. The first one is an anterior flap, second one is a superior inferior flap, third one is a combined flap and Fourth one is an isolated flap. This is a, a very, very cool uh, needle and suture. I always use uh, S14 called YQ60 and with the spatula needle. You can see that originally the, the, the suture will come with the uh, 90 degree needle. We need to bend to be 180 degree because we know, all, all know the concept of the suturing with the nasal cavity. We need to bend a needle to be 180 degree. And the benefit of the spatula needle because of the chocolate in the front and in the side part. So not like not like a triangular needle. So when we cut through the nasal cavity, it's not that sharp, it's not drag the tissue, it's no bleeding and it's sharp enough. So when we do uh, apply the flap suturing inside the node with the spatula needle, it's very, very practical. <coughs> And the length of the suture of the needle is an 8 millimeter, not 11 millimeter, is appropriate to working in the small cavity. This is show the first classification of the anterior and uh, uh, posterior flap. After create the eye shape flap, we got, we got the anterior flap, and then we apply maybe backhand, forehand needle 
inside the nose and gradually uh, soothing the lacrimal flap and then uh, keep quiet, uh, keep calm down, not no panic, and then uh, use two, your two hand for suturing like a simple uh, basic of the uh, plastic surgery. And the, the trick is uh, to make you feel more familiar. I let my assistant, who's gonna be fellow or resident, can hold the camera in another side of the gradient, and then I can. The benefit is I can choose my both hand for suturing the flap uh, internationally. Sometimes I suture the posterior flap also, uh, just something like uh, uh, for the teaching care, but. If you have time and you can suture and show the resident and fellow, that's good. But in my experience, uh, only suturing the anterior flap, that's fine. Because the posterior flap, it comes back down by the candy, by it on, and the uh, nasal mucosa will come and, and approximate by itself. And if, even though when you put the silicone stand, it's something like thoughtful the anterior flap to load it anteriorly uh, easily. So this is show the before and after the healing. You can see the healing of the nasal organ is so good and so big and so and sometimes the patient mm -hmm. blow the nose and they can feel the air pressure from the uh, nose to the eye. Mm -hmm. And the second classification mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. and the inferior flap. Initially, this uh, flap is in the, uh, recommended for the distended lacrimal sac, like in the acute or the chronic lacrimal cyst type, because it is so easy because the sac is all dilated and distended, the mucosa is all fake. When we can uh, make the head shape incision, and we can uh, open uh, in the superior and the inferior flap. This is like uh, for the teaching concept. But I do not use this one all the time. I use this one in the in in, in the uh, like a uh, 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 very critical uh, point, like a lot of scar tissue or in the revision surgery. I apply anterior and the superior flap in the surgery, so that help for prevent the scar tissue uh, coming over the in the area of the common canal And you can see that we can working in the nose. If you are gonna start that, please. Uh, just start slowly, be calm and slowly, don't uh, go too rush because sometimes it does, uh, because you, we are on the ophthalmology, we're not the ENT guy, we have basically not familiar with the endoscope, but trust me, keep practice and keep practice, and that help. Then the third one is a combined flap surgery and the combination with the anterior and the post superior. This help in the revision case and isolate flap is help also in some revision case. It is show the, the uh, diagram show the isolated flap. Sometimes when you cut in one cut in the in the scar tissue of the flap, because uh, this is a thumb syndrome, inside is a good uh, healing from the uh, that just have the small opening in the top of the nasal side. So with some one simple vertical cut, and then you rotate the flap posteriorly within only one simple uh, flap surgery for the posterior flap can help uh, this patient for survival of the third case. I think this 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 uh, helped me many many times in my practice. And uh, if you uh, for the surgery only two point is enough, and the suture will be absorbed by three months by it only no problem at all, and prevent the bleeding from the uh, after the surgery also. In nowadays, I do not use any packing anymore. I just use the the, the symbol. Uh, pack, uh, simple uh, uh, iliadine, uh, that's all congestion. Okay, uh, that's the end of my talk. Thank you. Uh, uh, welcome to Manila. See you guys in Manila. Thank you.